Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor and welcome to the next part of the post processing series of the in depth look of how to take each of the post processing effects and program them at runtime. And today we're going to be looking at chromatic aberration, but can almost create that cinematic camera style effect, a distortion around the edges of normally a camera lens. You will see the red, blue, green sort of hues that you can find and can distort it and make it look like a more cinematic or filmatic effect. So we'll look at controlling this technique on and off the intensities and different things today. Remember, I do have a tutorial to look at an entire overview, how to look at all the post processing, understand every intricacies and all the links in the description to show you how to manage them, write them in code. So be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 135 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. Check all the links also down in the description for all the awesome savings on the Unity Asset Store and the massive Humble Bundles for insane amount of savings on all your game dev needs. And make sure to throw a like on this video to always be notified on my newest content. So remember, just before we start, if you need to install the post processing effects, you, you can check out the tutorial in my overview down below. But as you can quickly see on the post processing volume, we've got the chromatic aberration effect, we've got spectral lookup table, we've got an intensity and a fast mode, and we'll learn about these, turn them on and off today. And do remember that once you start with this, you need to use the unity engine.rendering.post processing, which is going to access the namespace to access post processing and unity engine.ui if you want to use UIs. Then we create a private reference to the post process volume and we just give that a particular variable name and I've just called it underscore post process volume and then we reference the actual effect that we're going to use so in this case it's chromatic aberration and you would change this for whatever post processing effect you want and then on start we can get the component which we're going to add into this slot so if we had this script on our post processing volume itself we can just use get component if not we'd have to just get rid of this line and add it to the inspector and then we use the postprocess volume dot profile dot try get settings out and then the name of your effect that you want to find and it will let, allow us to access all the settings that we need first of all we want to be able to set the chromatic aberration effect on and off so we can start by writing public void chromatic aberration on off we can write bool on and this is something we can set on the ui and then we're going to say that if on is true, so if our tick box is true, so we can say if our underscore chromatic ab dot active is equal to true. And then if anything else, our underscore chromatic ab dot active is equal to false. So that would mean that we turn it on and turn it off for the effect. And then we also want to find the spectral lookup table, the intensity and the fast mode. And the in spectral lookup table is a texture, which is not as easy to set on a UI, but we can, I'll show you how to be able to set it in script like this. So we're just going to write public void chromatic aberration LUT, and then we'll just have a basic method like so. Underscore chromatic ab dot spectral LUT is equal to, and we need a name of a variable that we're going to set. So up here in our variables, we can just write square brackets serialize field private and this in this case we need to use texture parameter and we're going to call this our spectral lut like this because this is the type of texture that we'll need and we can set that equal to the spectral look on the chromatic aberration now if you press control and left click on say spectral lut you can see the other parameters or variables that created which you can access for the chromatic aberration effects. So you can see the spectral look, intensity and fast mode, and you can see how to reference them. So we've done the first one, we need to then add or create intensity. So we can say public void our intensity, and then we can say flow slide slider value. And then within the intensity, we can say that the chromatic aberration dot intensity dot value is equal to the slider value for whatever it may be set. And then you could update the UI if you're going to do that on the UI effect. And then if for the fast mode, we can just do the same as the start, which is the on off type of thing. So instead of being chromatic aberration on off, we could just have the set fast mode as bool on. And if on chromatic aberration dot fast mode dot value, is equal to true or in this case chromatic aberration fast mode dot value 
is equal to false. And that's how we set all of these parameters for the chromatic aberration. Then you can add your script to the actual inspector. And if you've got in like my case here, where we've got some settings to be able to set it, you can go to chromatic aberration for toggle on and off. You just add your post processing and volume or whatever game objects it, it's on and make sure that you choose the script that you're looking for and then choose chromatic aberration on and off for your slider, add it to the slot, go down to your script and make sure that you choose intensity. And then the fast mode, you do the same and you can just choose set fast mode for the tick box, which is on or off. And remember in that script, you've got the spectral LUT, which you can add a texture to that slot, which you can change at runtime like I showed you. Then I can turn the chromatic aberration on and you can see you can look into this top corner here. As I move the slider, you can see the distortion that's created at the edges of shadows and things that are created. And we can take that back down and you can see that the distortion that's created as if we're looking through an actual camera lens itself. So I hope you found this helpful and you can check all the links down in the description for all of the other tutorials for this series, the overviews, all the look at the overviews for post-processing in general. Be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 135 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And be sure to check out my awesome assets on the Unity Asset Store and on my website for awesome discounts for being a patron and subscriber. And thank you so much for joining my Patreon. Big thanks to Peter Steiner, Raheem Whitaker, Pavel, Tan Yanlin, Monetary and US RustTube 2X and all the amazing people who've come to support the channel. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.